one you say. And poutine, is it poutine? <laughs> yes, poutine and um, Canadian bacon. Shit, I shouldn't have said Canadian, but that's the theme, Canadian. Canadian bacon, is that just like regular bacon? Let's see, or is it just what they call ham in Canada? Um, Canadian bacon is just about, uh, who knows? Who really knows? Who really cares? Um, and I hope your day's full of Caesar salads, Caesars, and uh, beaver tails. Beaver tails are flattened donut without a hole, and they eat those in Canada. So now you know. Also, I hope your day's full of Canadian pizzas. I don't know if you know what a Canadian pizza is, but it is... It has a lot of flavors, flavors I've never even heard of. It's it's wild. Look it up. You know what I mean? I don't have the time to even go there. Butter tarts. Do you want to know what a butter tart is? Yes, you do. It is a Canadian dish that could be traced back to the late 19th century. It consists of delicate, crumbly, crumbly crust and a creamy center made of butter, sugar, and egg mixture. Butter tarts. That's some Canadian shit. Um... There's other things that I, I don't know how to say, like some type of, it's a Nanamio bar. Ah, I don't know. Look that up. Um, split pea soup is Canadian, but you didn't know that. I just found out myself. Um, catch up on everything. Apparently that's a Canadian thing. Who knows? Maybe you're like, bitch, why are you talking about Canada? Are you planning on moving there? Are you planning on escaping the hell that is the U.S. by moving to Canada? No, I plan on staying here in Los Angeles where the sun always shines. And um, no, I'm talking about Canadian things because today's guest is Tom Green. That's right, the Tom Green. I'm super excited to have him on. A uh, big fan of Tom Green growing up and this was a really exciting episode for me. You guys are gonna love it. But, be but before we get into this week's episode, I just want to tell you about something that I like, and that's CBD. Everyone who knows me knows that I get a little bit of anxiety from time to time. Why? Because life is stressful. Why? Because I'm trying to do a million things at once. And what helps me calm down? CBD. That's right. CBD. Why? Because... It works for me. I don't know what else to tell you. I've tried different types of things for anxiety and truly nothing works better than Care by Design CBD. I personally love the sublingual drops. I just put a little bit underneath my tongue and it calms me down so much. Sometimes I'll squirt some of the drops in my tea like a party animal, you know what I mean? Just mellow myself out with some herbs in the morning in my robe. That's how your girl gets down. Uh, but yeah, I try a lot of different products and truly I don't, I can say without a doubt that Care by Design is one of the best CBD products on the market right now. You can check them out at cbd.org. And if you go to their homepage, they'll ask you some questions and you can figure out what type of CBD treatment is best for you. They have different topical ointments. They have sublingual drops. They have soft gel capsules. You name it. They got it. Check them out, cbd.org, or head over to ease.com. Use discount code SHANK, S-H-E-N-K, for 20% off. That's right, 20% off on all Care by Design products with discount code SHANK. Guys, everyone knows that I love weed. Why? Because I'm a stoner girl. That's just something about me. I just called myself a stoner girl. Yes, that did just happen. I won't ever do it again. I apologize. That being said, I go to a lot of dispensaries and truly, I just had the most immaculate is that the right word <laughs> it seems immaculate immaculate perfect pristine experience at libra dispensary in palm desert guys you gotta head out there if you're in the desert they have an amazing selection everything that they do is about balance libra means balance and if you go into the dispensary they you'll see that they have the perfect mix of stuff the best types of edibles the best types of strains check them out um also, they do this random shareable perk thing within Club Libra, which is a loyalty program. So they have these Apple wallet cards and they're shareable and you can redeem them in store. And the offer lasts 48 hours and they happen randomly throughout the month. So check out Libra. 
Their slogan is modern cannabis, and they're definitely that. Stay high, my friends. All right, guys, a special thank you to Better Box TV and Speedweed, and I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode with Tom Green. Here it is, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Shank. I'm Sarah Weinshank, and today's guest is Tom Green. Great to be here, Sarah. Thanks for uh, reaching out and uh, inviting me onto your show today. <laughs> I'm so happy yeah. to have you on my show today. I'm a big fan of the show. I'm so yeah. happy to hear that because I love the Tom Green show. Oh, thank you very much. Growing up, thank it you. was like the thank only you. two comedians I really knew it was like Robin Williams and Tom Green. There you go. That's 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 cool. That makes me feel really good. It does. Yeah, of course. You Robin Williams feel was good. amazing. Robin Williams was amazing. You should feel Rest good. Rest in peace. He was the the, the greatest. Absolutely. Yeah. And so like I just I don't know. But those just, were the only two, you know? Me and Robin Williams? Kind of. Really? Like yeah, I just didn't like because my parents watched Robin Williams mm -hmm. and then um, I would just sit in front of MTV you were on for MTV hours. A lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my parents had to put like a password on their television because I would just sit in front of MTV. Yeah. And like stare yeah. for hours and hours and hours yeah. um yeah so they put a password on it. it ruined my life so what you can only watch for a certain amount of time yeah and at certain hours of the day yeah okay they regulated that shit. probably a good thing yeah in hindsight i guess yeah. that's what good parents do yeah. but like at the moment i was like my parents are cock blocking me from the only thing i care about which is mtv spring break yeah the tom green show yeah in real world yeah Probably good that you missed a few of those shows. Yeah. Well, I wanted to just skip college and go in the real world. I yeah. was like, screw that. That looked fun, huh? Yeah, it did. Yeah, I never got to really, I wasn't really around the real world people that much. That was a different department. Really? Is yeah. there any overlap in the MTV space? Um, not really. There was, there was, I mean, well, I would see Carson Daly uh, around because uh, we were down in the same building. So Carson Daly was around doing Total Request Live. Oh, yeah. I remember um, these days. Yeah. So we were, you know, I was really only on MTV for about two years. You were? And only about a year of that was in uh, in New York City where, you know, all the action happened. Yeah. And we moved out to Los Angeles, not far from here. Actually, really? Just down the street on Orange. Oh, cool. Yeah, Orange is right here. That's awesome. Should I not be giving away the location? No, give away the location, okay. right. Tom. Yeah. It's you're, you're right here on Orange, yeah. near Orange in, in uh, Hollywood, California. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's cool. This is a great studio. This is amazing. I've you know I've I've uh, enjoyed uh, independent uh, broadcasting uh, for most of my life. Yes. Uh, I studied broadcasting in college. You did where? At Algonquin College. Where in, in Ottawa, Canada? Canada. Yeah. So I know all about microphones and stuff. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I know all about microphones. And, <laughs> uh, I don't know what this one is. Uh, it's just a, a Shure. It's a Shure microphone. Pretty good is mic. Is it? Is it a Shure yeah. mic? Can we get yeah. a confirmation, yeah, Anthony? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah? yeah. Good cool. microphone. Oh, yeah. wow. So yeah, you, you got all the shit. good equipment here. You got some good cameras here. I don't know if those are Sonys or Panasonics, but they're the... Remote remote cameras, so that's pretty impressive. So you know all the technical stuff. I built too. I built a TV studio in my living room in 2004. You did. And was doing this, except we didn't have the remote cameras because I don't think they'd invented them yet. Um. But it was fun. That's so fun. Are you yeah. still doing that? No, not anymore. No, it was in my house, but that's I stopped. A commitment. I just stopped doing it after after about five years. It was we had a lot of fun with it though. Yeah. But now I've just decided that this year. Uh, rather than doing my own podcast, uh -huh. I'm just going to go on everybody else's podcast. I like that. Yeah. So then I don't have to like do the podcast. I'll just go on other, when people ask me to do their podcast, like you, yeah. you asked me to do the podcast, yeah. just go, don't go in your podcast. Podcast hopping. And then I can talk exact podcast hopping. Yes. That's what we'll call it. Yeah. Tom so Green's I like that. podcast. I didn't even have a name for it. Podcast hopping. Podcast That's what hopping, you're yeah. doing. Yeah. I like that because it is a commitment to have a podcast. podcast Do you think topic. you'll have a podcast again? Um, I, I think I could. I, I don't want to say never to that. I don't like to say never to things like that. Right. Um, I have a, I have a recording studio at home. Uh, okay. Uh, and I, I, I have sort of in theory a podcast if you go to my website, but I only post an episode maybe about once every six months. Okay. I respect it, that. It's just sort of, it's just sort of in the, you know, kind of, I just do it for fun once in a while. 
But I have awesome. the studio at home because I like to make music in my studio. Oh, you make music yeah. too? Hip hop beats. You make hip hop beats? Yeah, I make hip hop Let's beats. Let's talk about these beats. Okay. Yeah. So what inspired you to start making hip hop beats? Uh, I started making hip hop beats in uh, 1988. Okay. Uh, probably because I liked uh, listening to Run DMC and the Beastie Boys and uh, later uh, Public Enemy. I love this. A tribe called Quest. Okay. So I started a rap group in high school, and I made the beats. What, what was the rap group? Uh, we were called, called? Organized Rhyme. Yeah. Organized yeah. Rhyme? Yeah. Like Organized Crime? Like rhyme. Organized Crime, yeah. Wow, that's fucking amazing. And we actually, uh, my friends and I, uh, we had backup dancers, too. It was it was pretty cool. And uh, we, had, <laughs> uh, we had jackets made. Okay. And they said police on the front. And organized rhyme on the back. Like no. we were the organized crime unit. No. But we were the organized rhyme unit. And uh, it said police on the front. And we would walk around uh, downtown Ottawa, Canada uh, on the weekends. We were basically a gang. <laughs> uh, except nobody cared. And, you were uh, like a, okay. We were like a gang. And we'd said police. And nobody ever came up and said, hey, are you impersonating a police officer? Because obviously we weren't because I was I was 16 years old. That yeah. this is amazing. OK, so how were you at rapping? Uh, I was OK. I enjoy doing it. Did you you committed fully? Yeah. Yeah. We got a record deal. No, you didn't. Yeah. When I was uh, 19, I, I wanted to be a rapper. Actually. Wait, you got a record deal. Yeah. So There's, I have a video on YouTube. How old yeah, were it's, you? Uh, it's from 1992, uh, 1991, a video on YouTube. Okay, what's it called? It's called Organized Rhyme. Check, <laughs> check the OR is the name of the song. <gasps> OR stands for Organized Rhyme. I'm going to look this up. That's what we came up with. I'm looking this up. Wait, yeah. actually, Anthony, yeah. can, can we pull it up? We can't yeah. pull it up? Maybe we can sync it in later or something. Maybe we can sync yeah. it in later. It's pretty dope. That sounds amazing. It's pretty dope, yeah. Um. So... Okay, so how so that was around like that's when you were a teenager, and then when did the Tom Green show happen? Well, and how did that happen? Shortly after that, I started doing a uh, public access radio and then a television show around the same time. Uh, so it was a few years later. I start 1994. I started the TV show on uh, community cable cool. in, in Canada cool. while I was studying broadcasting at uh, at Algonquin College. Cool. Named after the Algonquin Indians. Algonquin. Who are, who are also great broadcasters. <laughs> Smoke signals is actually the original first form of, of broadcasting. So, so funny. That's not why the school's named after that, though, because they have a lot of other programs there. Like yeah. They have chef's courses. They do. Mechanic uh, courses, all sorts of nursing, could dental you, hygienist courses. Uh, I can cook, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't take the uh, cooking class. That was just down the hall from I'm the just broadcasting wondering department. Wondering what other things. Tom I do Green cook. Can I like do. to cook a lot. I like cooking. I cook. Um, what do you like? To I like cooking fish. What kind? Uh, I like cooking uh, salmon. I like baking salmon. Is my new thing I've been enjoying lately. I like. Uh, I like uh, broiling red snapper. Oh shit, Tom! You know, you're not you're fucking around. Like a broiled, <laughs> like a broiled red snapper every once in a while. <laughs> Broil red snapper. Yeah, I do. yeah, yeah. The more you say broil red snapper, yeah. the funnier it is to yeah. me for some reason. Um, <laughs> it's good. It's a good fish. How did you land on red snapper? I don't even know what that is. Uh, well, I spent a lot of time in uh, Costa Rica. You did? Yeah, I, I, I lived there part time. You did? Yeah, uh, still currently, yeah. I live there part time. Oh, you live there? Yeah, part time, yeah. And, You're and a Los man Angeles. of mystery. Yeah, and the local fishermen, they catch a lot of red snapper and uh, mahi-mahi fresh out of the ocean. And I like to, you know, cook them up. Broil them. Yeah, broil a nice red snapper. <laughs> so. <laughs> Wait, okay. What? I fucked up mahi-mahi once and I'm still not over it. Oh, really? What did you, how did you, you overcooked it? You burned it? I think it? I undercooked it. Oh, they, I was they say you can't of, do that. I, I did. Was it still frozen? No, it just didn't, it just, I didn't like the texture. Yeah. It was yeah. a little slimy. Yeah. Yeah, I might want to cook it a little longer then. Yeah, I fucked you it like up. You like sushi? I like sushi. It's not even cooked at all. No, I know. That's the whole thing about sushi. That's that's the wildest part of yeah, about sushi. It's like sushi. not even cooked. It's just raw. That's like the whole, it's like a gimmick. <laughs> it's basically a gimmick. It's a whole shtick they do over there at that all the is. sushi places. And the only thing they do cook is rice, which is like so cheap. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you know how you eat sushi? How? Because nobody knows how to do it. How? You know how you get the ginger? Yeah. 
and then you get the wasabi. Yeah. And then you get the little the little bowl that yeah. you put the soy sauce <laughs> yeah. in. And then you mix the wasabi in the in the little bowl. Yeah. And then people take their sushi and they they dip it. Yeah. In the in the <laughs> wasabi and soy sauce and yeah. they eat it. But then all the little bits of rice fall off into the bowl. Yeah. And you end up having this little bowl full of wasabi and soy sauce and rice. And it's kind of then you have to swap it out and get a new bowl. Yeah. Right? That's not how you're supposed to eat sushi. How? What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the little bowl, put wasabi in it, uh, mix it all up. Then you take your chopsticks, you take a little slice of the ginger, you dip the ginger in the soy wasabi, and you spread use that to spread the soy wasabi onto your sushi. I like and that. And then you eat the sushi. <laughs> I know that because I saw that on the internet two weeks ago. Oh my God, you should... Uh, and now I tell people as if I've known this for a long time. You're a culinary expert yeah. is what I'm the takeaway here. I've been doing that with a lot of things lately. Like I've, what else? Like, like if, I, if I read something on the internet, then I'll immediately go to Twitter and I'll tweet it out as if I'm an expert in this area <laughs> so that people think that I'm, I'm highly qualified in all sorts of things. I feel like that's what everyone does on Twitter, right? Yeah. yeah. I've just sort of identified it more recently and I'm sort of starting to talk it out openly. I like that. This is a safe space to talk about, you know, the things that you're doing on Twitter. Yeah, I just feel if I get it out there that that's what I'm doing, that maybe, you know, people, you know, won't let me get away with it as much. <laughs> um, well, so, okay, how did you end up living half in Costa Rica? Uh, I just kind of, I've been going there for 15 years, uh, and uh, it's uh, my favorite place in the world. And uh, uh, because it's very peaceful, uh, beautiful country with uh, lots of nature and uh, monkeys in the jungle. Monkeys? And monkeys, yeah. Howler monkeys. In, What's uh, a howler monkey? Uh, it's a howler monkey. It's like a... It's, oh, right. It's, yeah, yeah. There's red snappers and howler... Yeah, it's a and howler monkey. What is it's it? A kind of, it's a kind of monkey. Uh, howler They're monkeys. called howler monkeys because they're very loud. They, 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 uh, they have the loud... Their, their voice travels further across land than any animal on the planet. So you hear them way off in the distant jungle, miles away, like every Wizard morning. Like Wizard of Oz type Kind of like that. It's very much like that, actually. Damn. Yeah. Really? It's very much like that. <laughs> really? Well, I don't know if it's like the Wizard of Oz, but I mean, I, I don't, I, I, it could be. I mean, it's, 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 it sort of becomes pretty normal down there. Wait, know? okay, so like, are I mean, the monkeys... I've, been, I've been living down there for 15 years, so. That's yeah, crazy. Off and on, you know. Are the I mean, monkeys, I go back and forth. Are they nice? Uh, they are. Or scary. The howler monkey is, like, you know, you hear about people that go away to, you know, places where there's monkeys and the monkeys run down and steal, like, food off their plate yeah. at the restaurant and stuff. Yeah. The howler monkeys don't do that. That would be more the okay. spider monkeys or the capuchin monkeys will do that. Those are the ones with the little <laughs> white heads. Okay. But the howler monkey is more of a, a bigger, you know, monkey and it's uh, more keeps to itself. They stay up in the trees. They'll look at you, though. How do you have so much monkey knowledge? Just like I said, it's just it's just part of my neighborhood. I live in Costa Rica and... There's monkeys all over the place, so Tom, you get to know it. You're a very yeah. interesting guy. You know about red snappers, howler well, I mean, there's monkeys. A, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about, but I do happen to know about <laughs> monkeys and red snapper. Yeah. Well, I respect that. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to make a point to just talk about things that I sort of know about today. I like and that. Also, I'm. 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 I do this thing. I'm trying to do this thing now on podcasts. Like when I when I go on a podcast, where like I try to change the subject into non sequitur places a lot i like that yeah we can we can change subject but then i'll whatever. pause and then i'll let you bring it back to whatever you want to talk about yeah no i, but I like to that. do that just to make it a little more random and then so yeah. every interview is different yeah we can talk about whatever you want to talk about yeah like i've never talked about cooking red snapper on a podcast before not just cooking yeah. broiling broiling yeah. yeah yeah never talked about that before right well that's I'm some happy. lemon wedges on it. Ooh, lemon wedges? And you serve it on a palm leaf. Or a Tom, banana, on a banana leaf. Now you're just leaf. showing off. A banana leaf you're from a banana tree. <laughs> you're serving red snapper on a banana leaf? Yeah, you just throw it on a banana leaf off of a banana tree. <laughs> you know, and it looks nice. Nice presentation. What? What other things does Tom Green do? Weird things like uh, that. Like, hmm. do you, like, paint? Do you no. meditate? Uh, I don't. Meditate, no. I mean, I, I, I did try meditating like about a month ago. How'd it go? And it was great. I really enjoy it. But I wasn't officially meditating. I just kind of, I just stopped talking for about five minutes <laughs> and just looked at the, I was watching a sunset in Costa Rica, actually. And I just sort of 
decided, hey, I'm just going to stop talking for five minutes and watch the sunset and take a deep breath and enjoy the, the sunset. And, and I felt great afterwards. I, I did. And I, I, I sort of thought that maybe that it was meditating. And I, I did have a conversation with my mother about it, actually, who was there with me, my mother and father, and said we should start meditating. Because our family, we talk a lot. Yeah. Like we just talk. We That's just like keep, my family. Yeah. I just spent the last month with my mother and father at my place in Costa Rica. Ooh. And there's, uh, there's lots of videos on my Instagram of me hanging out with my mom and dad in Costa Rica eating Red Snapper. No. Yeah, yeah. I got to I got to There go might not be a Instagram. Red Snapper video, but there is lots of of uh of stuff of having fun down there with the monkeys and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. I remember on one episode of the Tom Green show. I want to say that did you bring a goat into your parents' house or something? I, I, brought, I, I, I brought, I did bring a goat into my parents' house, but there was also a donkey and a cow and a llama <laughs> and a few other things. We, we brought a lot of animals into the house at one point. That was one of our early pranks. Uh, years before the show was picked up by MTV, we did that up in Canada for our, our cable show. And uh, yeah, I did a lot of those big elaborate pranks on my parents. And, uh, you know, I, I mean... It was an interesting time because uh, people like hadn't really seen that stuff before on television. Totally. Yeah. So, you know, this was wasn't even on MTV. This was on a little goofy cable channel that nobody watched. Right. So people would stumble upon it on the middle of the night in Canada, and uh, you know there was no promotion for it. It wasn't a popular, well-known show. You know, it was just a kind of a weird thing that was on at 11 o'clock at night on Thursday nights on this weird little channel. But then people so slowly started to discover it. That's and, so uh, cool. And they didn't know what they were looking at. Because, you know, I mean, the world's changed a lot because I'm in my lifetime, I'm pretty old, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, I remember like before, like basically before reality TV. This was before reality TV. So there wasn't shows like, you know, the Osbournes and the Kardashians and Shows where you saw families disintegrating totally. on TV, you know? Totally. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of, you know, felt like it was, it was, it was, a, it was an interesting thing because people would come up to me and they didn't really even comprehend what they were looking at. Like they would, they, sometimes they would try to ask me if my parents were actors, <laughs> they, 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 they didn't really no, it was, it was weird. People would say, are those your real parents? People would always say in 1995, are those your real parents? Yes. And it's kind of like, well, of course they are. I mean, nobody would be able to, first of all, if you were going to hire actors and write a script, you wouldn't shoot the thing with a SVHS video camera that totally. was like all out of focus and looked like crap, right? Totally. But then you sort of start to realize that most people don't really even know anything about that stuff back then, right? Yeah. We didn't all have cameras on our phones and things like that. So yeah. people were just kind of very, very confused. So I feel like kind of lucky that I was sort of at the age I was uh, at that time and had the interest to do that kind of thing because, you know, um, you, 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 I think it would be so much, much harder to have, uh, to have really done that today, you know, because there's so many people filming their own stuff that it wouldn't have really maybe it would have gone unnoticed i don't know if it would have gone unnoticed because i remember watching it and being like whoa whatever that job is that tom green has i yeah. want that job yeah. <laughs> like that seems fun it seems like a party um it just seemed fun so like when you were making the show did you have how much like creative control did you get um it was pretty good. I mean, there was there was definitely because it was know, so unique. There was definitely a lot of. I mean, the thing is, uh, the show in Canada, I had 100 percent creative control because nobody cared. Nobody, <laughs> nobody was watching. I wasn't getting paid. It was a voluntary thing. Okay. We just got so you access. You don't get paid for public access. No, not 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 okay. not. We weren't. I mean, I, I I should check into that. But no. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, we just were felt lucky to have access to the equipment and be able to air it. So. So, but because of that, it was just so under the radar that nobody really cared. There was probably not even that many people watching at first. 
But then as soon as it got to MTV, what happened was we had all these videos I'd done already. Probably had, I probably had a thousand videos that I'd already edited and done, right? And I sent a few to MTV and they saw them and they called me. They said, these videos are really crazy. We yeah. like these videos. It's one where I painted my parents' house and, you know, did, did stuff to my parents, right? It's all on YouTube. You can go on my YouTube channel. A lot of it's on my YouTube channel. But uh, so I said, yeah, I have about a thousand of these videos. And they said, a and then the next thing you know, they, they flew me to, uh, uh, well, their executive flew up to Ottawa, came to the studio. I showed them a bunch of videos, showed them all the videos. And uh, then, then, I, uh, then they prepped me to go pitch the show here in LA. I had to fly down to LA and pitch the show at the House of Blues. Oh, well, and then they bought the show. And two weeks later, they moved a couple of my friends and I to New York City and they gave us apartments. And uh, about, I don't know, three months later, the show was on the air, and it was very exciting. That's so crazy. It was really crazy. And we didn't have MTV in Canada, so I didn't really, I knew what MTV was, because I'd heard the Dire Straits song. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We got to move these refrigerators. Yes. We got to move these color TVs. Yes. I want my MTV. <laughs> so we knew what it was. And we had Beavis and Butthead, but it aired on Much Music. Which is oh, the Canadian okay. MTV. Okay. But I didn't really know the culture of MTV or I didn't grow up watching it every day like you. Yeah. So I was completely unintimidated by it. That's kind of nice. And then also we'd shot so many of our videos already that when we got there, I didn't really have to like negotiate with them on what we were going to shoot. It was really just, we just started editing them for time and I'd have to kind of deal with them wanting to screw up the video in the editing room and we've got big arguments about that but then the show went on the air and it was so it became such a sort of a hit show like right away and then i didn't have to argue with anybody anymore because they just let me do what i wanted to do that's so cool so do you you sat in the editing room yeah i would go i edited all the videos originally and then um then they took them and gave them to a you know a professional <laughs> editor <laughs> <laughs> and then they, uh, you know, and then they kind of tried to like sort of tighten them up and all that stuff. But it was, it, you know, it ended up being good. I mean, yeah. I, I, I uh, obviously, uh, my life would be uh, very different if MTV hadn't picked up that show. And I can't think of anybody who would have, I can't think of any television network at that time or ever really that would have taken that show, put it on TV and had the impact that it had because, you know, MTV is so mainstream totally you know? it, like and this was such a weird show it was like an edgy like cool if that show. was on adult swim it would be cool they totally. didn't have adult swim then but all the weird weirdos would love it totally but here we had like normal people watching and getting confused i and, was like, like this is so cool yeah this and we like had weirdo job. the weird people everybody watched mtv right you yeah had, you had the mainstream people you had you know people that are into sports people that are into music people that are into rap music or metal or mainstream music or you know so it was kind of cool because it just hit this massive number of people just at this really interesting time when people hadn't seen that kind of that kind of tv before and uh it was somewhat life changing. So thank you, MTV. I don't. I don't like to go around and sometimes I kind of you can dwell on the negative in life. You know, totally. people say, "Oh, was there a lot of creative problems?" And you know, I, and I have talked about that sometimes because it is kind of interesting because it got kind of crazy sometimes the arguments with the executives and stuff. Totally. But I've been trying to kind of like limit the amount I talk about that because it really still ultimately was all good, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be here doing your podcast if they hadn't picked up this yes, show. Yes, I wouldn't. Need, I'd be yeah. back in Canada, like, you know, making a red snapper in my parents' <laughs> basement. Yeah. Broiling. Yeah, broiling a red snapper somewhere. <laughs> in the basement. Yeah. Um, what about fashion? Does Tom Green, have you had any weird fashion phases? Like, when you would do a oh, yeah. show, were yeah, you, like, sure. wearing yeah. weird shit? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Did you really like, re were you oh, like, yeah. I need to dress differently now that I have my show? Yeah. Like, did that happen at all? Yeah. Like Walk I, 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 it. I didn't used to be as fashionable as I am now. What? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I've, I've sort of grown into sort of a more. See, I have like this black T-shirt. Yes, on. so fashion and forward. And jeans, and jeans as well. Yes. So, uh, I'm wearing Doc Martens though. I know you like Doc Martens. I do like Doc Martens. Yeah. Yep. yeah I read that on your uh, Wikipedia page. Yes. Yeah. You like Doc Martens, right? Yeah, I love Doc I'm right. Martens. Check it out. I'm right about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right about everything, Tom. Yeah. Um. Why do you like Doc Martens? 
Why? It's a practical shoe. Yeah. It's a practical shoe. It's edgy. It's fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not like a basic bitch shoe. Okay. You know, okay. like you're not going to see. Right. You know, it's fun. That feels good to know. I that like I'm fun. Not things. wearing a basic. Uh, bitch shoe. Yeah. You didn't want to say the B word. So I said, yeah. I said it for yeah, you. I, I do that That's on purpose. Respectful. Yeah. Tom Green. Respectful you know? guy. Canadians are. Kind I said of, the B word for him. Yeah. See what we did. <laughs> I let you do that though. Thank you. I Thank you. Pause so purposely. So yes. I <laughs> I saw an opportunity and I took it. Thank you. I have been, uh, when I was in high school, I was a very, I, I went through a lot of very strange oh, fashion okay. phases. Like what? Like what? Okay. So first of all, when I was in the ninth grade, okay, which we said grade nine in Canada, I, I still have to. That's so weird. <laughs> you know, grade nine, grade 10, grade 11. But then I've st I still would say not grade nine, but I know we're speaking to your, uh, a lot of Americans here, so uh, I try to... Well, maybe to... we're getting some Canadians, too. You yeah. can say grade, grade nine. nine <laughs> ninth grade. Whatever you're comfortable with. Ninth grade, Miami Vice was big on okay. TV. Okay. I was a very, very skinny kid. Okay. Very, very nerdy skinny kid. Okay. Um, you know, I was the same height as I am now, but 50 pounds lighter. So, uh, you know, I was, I was very insecure uh, about myself. Uh, probably the reason why I started doing stand-up. When I was in high school, I started doing stand-up. Go to a comedy club, do stand-up. Not dressed as Crockett from Miami Vice. <laughs> I would actually dress up as David Letterman when I did stand-up. No. I'd wear khaki pants. No. I would wear my dad's blazer. No. <laughs> and, uh, and Adidas sneakers. And I would live the early late night with David Letterman So, uh, show. So uh, he, And I would even wear these glasses that I didn't need, the round glasses. No. Because I loved Letterman so much. Oh, my God. That's so amazing. So I dressed up like David Letterman when I was 15 years old doing stand-up at, <laughs> at Yuck Yucks. At Yuck you Yucks were 15? Up. Yeah, 15 on the cusp of 16. I started doing stand-up. I loved it. That's I, young. Yeah. yeah How would yeah. you even get into the clubs? They uh, let me in, actually. They let me in. Back in the day, like in the 80s, like I think things were a little more Lenient. loose with like ID. And that was called also like it was sort of considered a restaurant and comedy clubs were not common i mean it was only comedy club in ottawa totally um, people didn't really know is it a restaurant is it a bar so it was just no problem so i would go there as a, just to go there to watch shows a lot kids from high school went to watch the shows there probably they wouldn't be allowed to do that now actually but this was different back then and uh and then uh i started doing the they called it amateur night back then Okay. Which uh, I don't think they call it amateur night anymore. It's not like open mic. Yeah, open mic night or, you An know. Amateur night. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of a little bit of a degrading word. For yeah. It, you know, yeah, yeah, for yeah. It. You know, it's, it sort of sets you up like for failure too with the audience. Totally. Welcome to amateur night. <laughs> yeah. Get ready to laugh <laughs> uh, at these amateurs. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was on Thursday nights and you'd go down there and do that. And I did that for a couple of years. But. And then, and then I started doing middle spots and feature spots, and then, uh, and then I, uh, and then I, uh, yeah, I, I stopped doing stand up for a while after that because I. You did. I went to become a rapper. Yeah. So. Okay, so you did stand up for how long, and then you became a rapper, and then did you go back to stand up? Uh, I did stand up for about three or four years. Okay. And then I stopped doing stand up when I was about I don't know, twenty maybe. You're like fuck this, my rap. Self. Then we got when we got that record deal, I stopped doing stand up, oh. and then after after the record deal sort of fizzled out, I went back and studied broadcasting and started my show. Okay, okay. And then uh, then that that's sort of what I did. But but um, but I uh, now I'm, I've you know I've I've been on tour nonstop for the last ten years, and it's the best thing that I've decided to do in my adult life. Stand up was get back into doing stand up and. I am uh, so happy I have because I, uh, I, I am just basically, I've seen the world the last 10 years. I'm going all over the world. I'm traveling constantly. I'm, I'm going to be in Canada next week uh, in Kitchener at the uh, Kitchener uh, Waterloo Comedy Festival. Oh, and I'm in San cool. Diego in two weeks at uh, American Comedy Company. What Comes, date? It's the last weekend of this month, I believe. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. And That's then, awesome. Uh, and all my dates are on my website. Okay. But... Uh, in, so Outfits. then I would go to school and I would dress like in the ninth grade Crockett from, uh, Miami Vice. Okay. Okay. I had the, a pink t-shirt, a white this. blazer, no. uh, you know, like 
uh, penny loafers. You know? Yes. Yeah. You know. I know a penny and, loafer. And the mesh. The mesh. But then by by the end of ninth grade, I realized that that was really really lame and probably wasn't really something that like really suited me. I also loved Duran Duran. Okay. A lot. Okay. And so I grew my hair very, very long on one side because I, al- I was also a skateboarder. <laughs> okay. And Tony Hawk had grown his hair long on one side. So I tried to replicate it, but I didn't really replicate it properly. And I just grew my hair really long on one side. And then I started putting that stuff called sun in in my hair. Have you yeah. heard of sun in? Oh, I did that. I turned yeah. my hair orange. Yeah, so I had orange hair yeah. long on one side. <laughs> and then as I became more, more uh, sort of you know, uh, heavily caught up in the skateboarding scene and the sort of the, you know, that world I started kind of, I remember some skaters in Ottawa were the first people I had ever heard of doing this. You know how everybody shops at vintage stores? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody did that in, in the, um, in the eighties. Okay. The eighties was very, uh, preppy. Okay. Like everyone at my school would listen. They'd listen to very mainstream music, you know, the Eagles. Okay. okay. Everyone thought they were being cool because they were listening to music from the 70s, like the Eagles. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, Hotel California. And they'd all get excited at the dance and they'd dance to the Grease soundtrack. (laughs) And everyone thought that was so cool. I just couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand everybody, you know, like all having fun together doing something really yeah. normal like you thought that was whack yeah i thought it was whack so i rebelled against it and i thought i was rad uh, <laughs> but i was really just a big nerd but i rebelled against it and some of the skaters i noticed started and i started going down to the uh not they wasn't there wasn't vintage stores. We'd go to like the the Salvation Army, okay, where they'd just sell old clothes for yeah. people. That oh, I know it. about the and Salvation buy like, Army. We'd buy like a pair of pants for a buck, or you know, like weird wool hats yeah. that we wear in the summer. <laughs> and uh, it was very strange. It was very confusing to uh, most uh, of my uh, fellow classmates at school because it wasn't really it didn't really make any sense. But I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> what did your parents think? They just thought I was a weird kid, you know, and but I mean, you know, I I was I was like, you know, I I thought it was hilarious. I did weird things too, like that. Like I just fully committed. Yeah. Like in eighth grade, I dressed up as Marilyn Monroe yeah. for Halloween, and then yeah. I was like, I did that too, actually. You did? Yeah, I did. I would that. Uh, my parents <laughs> thought that was really really odd as well. Mm-hmm. <sighs> no, continue though. Sorry. No, just like weird things like that, where yeah. I thought it was funny, but it didn't quite land with everyone else. Yeah, I'm like, I'm killing it. Like I brought like a chia pet to school and i was like could this be the class pet yeah the teacher was like absolutely and everyone was like what's wrong with this girl and i was yeah. like that's hilarious to me <laughs> do you think social media has ruined the chia pet is it not a thing anymore that's such a good question like are we just so addicted to our digital devices that we're no longer thrilled by a little pottery animal <laughs> with alfalfa sprouts growing out of it <laughs> That's such a good question. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. Is, is, do kids still play with that? Chia pets? <laughs> chia pets. Are they just all like on uh, TikTok? Everyone's on TikTok and the chia pets have been forgotten. That's such a, a, like a real question. Do you remember the smart clapper? I remember the clapper. Yeah. Clap yeah. on, clap off. Yeah. A I might even of- need one of those soon. <laughs> You're going to need one of those yeah. soon? It's for old people who can't no. get up in the morning to turn off the lights. Now people just have their iPhones. Right. The clapper and the Chia Pet, two things. Clapper is obsolete too, right? Because you can run it all through your phone. Sad. The smart, smart houses and lighting and all that stuff. Pet rocks and Chia Pets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's definitely going to be something to, to look into after the show. Yeah. Chia, chia pets are still a thing. <laughs> yes, please do it. Please um, have a Tom Green chia pet yeah. as merch. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. I think you should do it. It's probably the kind of thing that would, would really take off. I think it would take off. Yeah. You could even have your beard. Yeah. If you want to keep it. I mean, you do it how you want. You know, it's your chia pet. I would do that. I sell merch <laughs> at my shows, but I sell a vinyl record of an album that I put out last year. Oh, that's cool. What's your yeah. album called? It's called The Tom Green Show. Oh, it is? And it's got some clips from the TV show, but I've mixed them with uh, samples and, and hip-hop beats that I've made. So it's kind of like a hybrid music comedy record. That's cool. So wait. So and it's on green vinyl. 
That's awesome. Because my name's Tom Green. Green, I like that. Yeah, so, that, that's the reason I did that. I love that. Um, so what musical instruments can you play? Uh, can you play? Or a little bit of like... guitar, a little bit of piano, but really what I'm more into doing is programming it all with uh, Pro Tools and this drum machine that I have, and I kind of put it all together and produce it. And I get into sort of different kinds of microphones and different kinds of audio processing equipment, like compressors and preamps and stuff like that and sort of putting together a little studio is kind of the the art so of cool. making music these yeah. days and kind of making the sound sound a certain way uh so you know a lot of what i do is some sampling i mean i can play a little guitar but i don't really play a lot of guitar on on my own music i more take sounds and i i program them that's fun mm -hmm. You just kind of like lay them over each yeah, other. And keyboards. Add. I have a keyboard. Yeah. I just got a keyboard. I know. I heard that. Oh my God. I don't even know really how to play it What yet. kind of keyboard did you get? A Yamaha with, it okay. has weighted keys. Nice. Because I have a fantasy of having a piano. So it feels like that's the closest to a piano. Yeah. But I can only play with my right hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we're working on the left hand. Yeah. It's hard to do. I'm just in there playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. I was like, I just want to do something where it's like, if I... Just like something that where the stakes aren't high, where it's just fun. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube. I have an app. Yeah. It's called Flow Key. Yeah. It listens to you while you play. Oh, okay. And then it like it lights up green if you get it right. Yeah. It's a whole thing. So you can just start with something very simple here. And yeah. then just play something over it here that goes with it. Yeah. I'm just playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. That's a good As place an adult to woman. Yeah. That's <laughs> Red <good> flags. <laughs> that's kind of, do you play that sort of for several hours at a time no. by yourself. <laughs> and rock back and forth. Yeah, just at home alone in the dark. You should do that for four hours tonight no. by yourself for four hours <laughs> in the dark with just one lone candle uh, in, the, in the corner. <laughs> and see, see how it changes you. First of all, you'll probably be way be better same. at playing Mary Had a Little Lamb by the end of it, too. Oh, I'll kill it. Yeah. I'll crush Mary yeah. Had a Little Lamb, but, yeah. like, mentally, I will not be okay. Might be good. Maybe, like, next time, right before you go do stand-up comedy, right before, <laughs> do a four-hour lone solitary <laughs> in the darkness Mary Had a Little Lamb <laughs> candlelight session. And then just show up <sighs> to the to the club. Just like, You're ready like to that. go. Yeah. You know? That's what I would do. That's what you would do. Yeah. Could could you sing? Like, do you sing? What's your What's your vocal? Uh, I kind of sing with like I, I like to. I want to sing like Johnny Cash. I want to <laughs> do a. I want to do a, right I want to do a country <laughs> uh, a country album like Johnny Cash. I think you could. Yeah. I fell into a burning <laughs> ring of fire. Wait, Tom, I think it you went should. down, <laughs> down, down, and the flames went higher like that. I think, I think that that's you, my register. <laughs> I think that like you in a cowboy hat yeah. could be a good look with like maybe like a bolo tie. Yeah, because I feel like I'm too old for rapping. But you could you could do country and rap. Like yeah. Some Billy Ray Cyrus shit. Yeah, that's big right now with right? that uh, the horse song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on my horse. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna take my horse yeah. to the the old town road song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, could yeah. be big. Yeah. Mm hmm so I, you know, I, I honestly, I don't really know, like, I don't really have any sort of real intention to sort of, um, it's just a hobby for me. It's fun to have a hobby. Yeah. Cause I was like, I just want to have a hobby where it's like, I don't care if it doesn't become anything. It's just fun. Yeah. It's like almost like its own meditation. Cause it takes your mind off yeah. from like other shit. Exactly. Where you're like, That's what music is for me. You know, if I've. You know, I'm on the road a lot. I come home. You know, I'm at my house. I turn on my drum machine or my keyboard and just start making some sounds. And it's something to do that is sort of takes you out of your your uh, head. Your head, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not toxic. Mm -hmm. So we like that. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. distraction from the real world. Yeah. It's fun. It's either that or scratch offs for me. No, I'm just kidding. Really? The lottery tickets? Uh, no. I don't know what scratch offs. Scratch offs are. are those scratchers. Where you scratch them? Aren't they called scratchers? And then the um the dirt comes off, and then it tells you if you won something or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. The lottery tickets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you yeah. ever do those? 
Uh, yeah, I've done it like maybe 10 times in my life. I've probably done it about 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, That's so you're okay. not addicted to it. Then. I'm not addicted to it, but yeah. I could see myself going down that road if I just let, if I played Mary Had a Little Lamb too much yeah. in my room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Next yeah. day, I'm just buying scratchers. <laughs> I'm not a big gambler. I've never won anything. Me either. So I think I feel very fortunate that I never had any success, you know, playing blackjack or poker early, and then I'm, I'm not chasing that dragon. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not chasing that dragon either because that seems like it'd be a, a crazy dragon to chase. Yeah, if you lose every time you play, and when you're, you know, when I was when I was young, the first couple of times I played blackjack, you know, in Vegas or wherever it was, and I didn't really, you know, have any money to lose, and then I lost that. It was such a devastating thing losing fifty bucks that uh, yeah. I, I've just never really been able to get over it. Yeah, no. Plus, I'm horrible at math. I'm so bad at math too, like so bad at math. Like I can't even divide. I can't divide either, especially if it's like, there's like remainders yeah, and like shit. Like long division? No. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Like, yeah. 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 And also like, I don't understand it. Yeah. Remember you'd have to write R? Yeah, like when they whatever. bring letters <laughs> into it, as soon as they brought letters into it, I didn't understand. No, I know. Like, I still don't understand. I don't even understand the concept. It's so... How it's, do you divide X with Y? They're letters. <laughs> that is a good question. They're letters. How's how... That is... That is I don't even understand. <gasps> if you're... You know, can you go to my Instagram and leave a comment in my Instagram right now and tell me how algebra works? Because I don't understand. Yeah, what's your Instagram? Tom Green. Oh, go to at yeah. Tom Green. At Tom Green, yeah. I've got a blue check mark. Oh shit! Yeah, I, just, means, I just got he's that. I just got it. Congratulations! Yeah, I'm on really that excited about mark. it. Really excited about it. I, I knew a guy at Instagram, and he like set it all up for me. So That's it's pretty awesome. cool. Congratulations! It's pretty cool. on, on the verification. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other weird fashion phases? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I gotta think about it for a second. Uh, like well, so then after the skateboarding phase, I mean, when the you know, I mean. The, when when the when the rap group was going, we would we, yeah. we, when the rap group was yeah. going, we would do goofy what were stuff. What you wearing? Like we would get like uh like yellow rain suits, like yeah. like like full rain suits. Okay, okay, this uh, is like what I'm hooded rubber rain suits. Okay, like we were fishermen. I love. Uh, we this. would show up at our rap concert dressed as fishermen. <laughs> uh, we would put laundry baskets on our heads. And do synchronized uh, dance routines. And my friend uh, from the group, uh, MC Pin, from Organized <laughs> Rhyme, I was MC Bones. It was Bones and Pin. Uh, <laughs> Bones rocking the microphone. I'm like a king on the throne. Only thing is I stand alone, right? Oh, Rhyming. Shit. We would rhyme. I love that. Uh, we, would, uh, we would put laundry baskets on our heads at the, at the concerts and uh, throw pita bread into the audience. And uh, my, my friend's parents... Fresh had, pita bread? Fresh pita bread, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was still, still good. And then my friend's uh, just re parents had just renovated their house, so they had about like, mm, about like 25 or 30 doorknobs lying around, old doorknobs that they didn't need. No. So if you were in the front row at an organized rhyme show in 1988, you may have been handed a free doorknob. On that no. one, on one particular night at Grand Central in Ottawa, that was the name of the club. What? Yeah, a lot of lot of yucky, lot of lucky kids left that night with a free doorknob <laughs> from MC Pin's saw... parents' house. What? Yeah, That's... we were weird. We were trying to be funny, you know. We were trying to be funny. I, I mean, we were this. funny actually. We actually were funny. I mean, nothing sounds funnier than handing yeah. out doorknobs and like wearing a fisherman outfit. We were silly rappers. I like that. For a week, I decided that I wanted to rap. Yeah. I started going by Rhyme Shank instead oh, yeah. of Wine Shank. That's I was good. like, I'm Rhyme Shank now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then everyone could not, no one could stand me. Because for the whole week, I was like, look what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can rhyme things together. I wouldn't yeah. stop doing it. I'd like go up to people and be like, do you want to have a rap battle? Yeah. And then I won a few rap battles. And then I was like, you know what? I'm hanging up my bars. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they hated on it? Because they were jealous? Because I was just like, um, Don't let the haters, actually uh, being a rapper is exhausting. Yeah. Sure, sure. You know? Like, it's not my true... It didn't feel like it was my true calling. Yeah. But maybe well, I'll dabble in it again. If you're good at it, you should do it. Yeah. You can combine it. I, I plan on actually incorporating some uh, rapping into my stand-up this year. I haven't done it yet, but it is something that I'm planning to do. I'm going to say it now so that if someone else does it later before I do it, I can actually go back and check the record and Let say it was my idea. Let the record show. Yeah. Yeah, I want I want I, uh, I haven't done it yet because it's it's hard, but I want I want to like basically make 
a joke rhythmically punchline punchline but then the punchlines start rhyming and then it but it's still still jokes but it starts rhyming but sort of mid joke it starts rhyming and then the beat comes in and oh, surprise cool. it becomes rapping I like that. Yeah, I want to do that. Would you do that as like your closer? I, maybe. Or, your or maybe, opener? Maybe. Probably, probably more towards the end, I think. I, I, I've, I've learned that I don't like opening with anything too no. loud or, 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 uh, or, or um, dramatic. You like, why? Because you feel like you have to get them on your I like, side? I, no, I, I like to, I like to uh, start with my uh, weakest material and uh, build. build. I like that. Yeah. Sometimes you can kind of... Sometimes the energy of the crowd when you walk on stage, you know, uh, is enough to, uh, to just go for a while on some, you know, B material. <laughs> but if you come out with your A material and that doesn't, like, connect, then you got nowhere to go. Oh, there's nothing worse than that. But if you come out with your B material and you're killing it, just keep doing that for a while until you run out of that and then then if you need somewhere to go you can step up and do your good shit and plus the b material gets better the more that you do it yeah so then it could become a material yeah, yeah. but I also like i also like to do that with volume and speed oh so like if you come out because i actually made that mistake because i shot a comedy special about eight years ago about a year and a half after a, you know really it started you know, doing stand up. Maybe, maybe it was a little more than eight years ago, but I just really started touring again. Uh huh. And then I went and shot this comedy special because I got asked to do a comedy special. And I basically been touring around for about two years or something like that. And so I kind of hadn't really kind of got to the place that I'm at now and that I, I wanted to be, you know? And so, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, I got to come out with like a bang, you know, I got to come out like, wow, be loud, yeah. and fast, and high energy and movement, right? And uh, I, I kind of, I now realize that I'd rather start off softer and slower and then ramp up to that. So it kind of has, you have, you have some surprises in like your that. back pocket for people, you know? I like that. The show builds towards something. I like that. As approach. opposed to you run out of steam and then you're Five 10 minutes, minutes in. in and then, oh, now, now I'm going to do my, my laid back deadpan stuff. <laughs> you know, I was just screaming at you for the last, past 15 yeah. minutes. So. Well... That's our episode. Cool. I can't That's tell cool. you. Thank you so much. I'm That's so fun. excited I got to have you on. Um, yeah, thanks for asking me. Yeah, of course. Where yeah. can our listeners and viewers find you? And do you have anything coming up you want to promote? Uh, well, I'm touring all year. So uh, if you go to TomGreen.com, you can see that I'm coming to, uh, I'm going to be all over the country. I'm going to be at a Skank Fest in Houston. Oh, That's going to be pretty cool. You're going to be at Skank Fest? Yeah, I had, I'm, awesome. I'm excited to uh, hang out with those those. Uh, wild and crazy folks. I love yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, I'm going to be in Philadelphia at Helium. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, San Diego coming up um, and um, Boston and all over the place. That's awesome. Yeah, I forgot where I'm going, but there's a lot of places. So, And you can find me on social media at Tom Green on Instagram, at Tom Green Live on Twitter. Okay. Um, I'm on TikTok. Oh, you're on TikTok? I just got on TikTok. What's your TikTok? Tom Green. Tom Green. Yeah, Tom okay. Green on TikTok. Uh, I actually had one that went viral. You did? Yeah, yeah. It was on Christmas Day. Okay. I was with my parents. Okay. Spent a lot of time with my parents. I like that. For a 48-year-old man. <laughs> I like that. A lot of time <laughs> with my parents. <laughs> hi, Mom, hi, Dad, and my brother. And uh, I was at my brother's place, actually, on Christmas Day this year in Canada. And I just started messing around with TikTok. And there's this one TikTok. Have you, have you, are you on TikTok? I am, but I rarely do it. Did you see? You know how it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people take sound that, and they, re, they reenact something to a sound or they yes. do a dance to a musical thing. Yes. So there was this one viral sound file that was going around where it sounds like a couple... You know, a man and a woman screaming at each other and having this <laughs> horrible lover's quarrel. Okay. But it was like really like angry, swearing, screaming, blood curdling screams. Kind of scary, actually. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and then people are, people, are, people are doing this joke where they'll film themselves while that sound plays. And then they put the little thing on the screen that says something some alternative reason for 
it, it seems like those people are in the other room. Totally. Okay. And everybody thinks that something crazy is going down in this per, in your house, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I did that on Christmas Day with my mom, with my mommy. And uh, <laughs> I said, you know, when your brother's girlfriend comes to visit on the holidays, it's never fun or something like that. And then in the background, you have the, and it got like two million. Really? Yeah. All my other ones have just, you know, All right. a thousand, two thousand. Check out your so TikTok. The thing, about, the thing about TikTok that's exciting, kids, if you're what's into social thing? media. What's the thing about TikTok? There, there's a, there's a, there's an, I don't know if algorithm is the right word, but there's a searchability on TikTok that algorithm. allows you to go viral and blow up instantly with no followers because it's all about hashtags on TikTok. So on Instagram, is it? yeah. So on TikTok, they announce every day what the trending hashtags are. Oh, so you can search that. This is how TikTok works. This is the way you make your TikTok blow up. Okay, if you want a million uh, <laughs> uh, hits too, kids. So you uh, you you can search the trending hashtag, um, and then you make something that works accordingly with that hashtag, and then that video will go into that hashtag section, which is being searched by everybody on TikTok. So they don't Got have it. to like look you up and follow you to find you. You're being sent to them first if you label it right. So you could you could be on your very first day with no followers, go viral and get you know ten million that's views. That's crazy. That's impossible to. That's not possible I'm to happen give on TikTok. A chance. Yeah, it should. It should. It's very fun. It's a lot of fun. People like it. Whoa. All the kids are doing it. TikTok with Tom Green. And I'm on YouTube also, YouTube. What's your YouTube? Uh, uh, YouTube slash Tom Green, YouTube.com slash Tom Green. Okay. And I put a lot of my old videos on there. Oh, you do? Yeah, a lot of Okay, we'll link to everything in the description Thank so you. everybody can find Thank you. Thank you. On all things. Amazing yeah. studio you have here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. And Thanks, thank you Sarah. to Betterbox and Speedweed. And thank, thank you. you guys so much for listening to and watching another episode of Shank. Please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And for comedy dates, follow me at Princess Shank on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks so much. Bye.